did. He was quite lucky to get the decision too in the final. Absolute effort now for Bruno. Every punch he throws, he has to grit his teeth. Arms are hanging down, desperately tired. Frank of 12 years ago, and tonight we take a look at some of our current crop of top amateurs who've reached the semi-final stages of this year's ABA competition. Once again, it's Harry Carpenter. For this year's ABA national semi-finals, we've come to the northeast of England, to Tyneside, which has a long boxing history. These championship semi-finals are being held over two nights at the Gateshead Leisure Centre. There are two English boxers at each weight, one Scott, and one Welshman. And these are some of the prizes that await the winners. This is a bantamweight semi-final. Patrick Mullings is the southpaw, the black southpaw, against Richard Voles, the young Welsh champion. He's only 18. And he's got a hard task here against Mullings, who was in this particular uh, final, the bantamweight final, in 1990 at the Albert Hall, and was beaten by Paul Lloyd. So a former runner-up in these championships against the 18-year-old Welshman, Richard Voles. Patrick Mullings comes from the St. Patrick's Club in northwest London. He can punch a bit, Mullings, in the London championships. In his semi-final, he knocked his opponent out in just under three minutes. Rolls, the young Welshman wearing red. Welsh senior champion for the first time. Plenty of junior success. Mullings to Southport, the former oh. finalist, boxing well within himself. Fuck. Just wondering, perhaps, what this young Welshman might have in store for him. Oh. He caught him over the top of the right hand and then turned his back, and he's getting a little caution for that. Oh. You're not allowed to turn your back on your opponent. Rolls pushing forward, trying to make some punches connect. And Mullings, quite good defensively, slipping a lot of the punches and waiting the chance to put the counter in. Again and again, he catches Rolls over the top of that right hand. Mm, danger signals here for the young Welshman if he doesn't uh, lift that defence a bit. Mullings and the Welshman told not to press down on Mullings' head. Mullings opening up now and there's that right hand again. He's been threatening that all along. Compulsory count of eight over Richard Voles of Wales. Opening round and again that right hand is a real danger punch. Second count. Voles smiles as though he really shouldn't Seven. be taking this count, Eight. but he's terribly exposed to that right hand. And there's still enough time in this opening Seven. round for Mullings to finish it, and finish it he has. And the 18-year-old Washington doesn't like being stopped, but he's being led to safety by the referee. And so Patrick Mullings from the St. Patrick's Club has won that in the opening round, two minutes, 52 seconds, and he'll meet Michael Aldis of Crawley in the finals on May the 6th. Adrian Stone from Bristol is the man wearing the black strip. And his opponent here, Jason Williams from Wales, one of the youngest competitors in this year's championships. He's only 17. The boy in the red singlet. Jason Williams from the Gwent Club in Swansea. 
stolen from the Empire Club in Bristol. The young Welshman uh, showed some nice moves in the opening round. He moves well, but uh, Stone looks the stronger of the two men. And beginning to force it a bit here. Adrian Stone taking part in his third successive ABA semi-final. He's been in the final once before. Stone looking for revenge here for what happened last year in these semi-finals because uh, a Welshman called Jason, Jason Matthews, beat him then. But this is Jason Williams taking this count. Seven, eight. Second round. And Stone now will be looking to finish it here and now. Well, Stone always looked the stronger man and uh, his punches are beginning to have their effect on this 17-year-old. So two counts over Williams from Swansea. And one more attack may well be enough. Uh, the referee, he's seen enough and he escorts the young Welshman to his corner. And so Adrian Stone from Bristol is the winner. Goes through to the ABA finals for the second time and you'll meet Darren McCarrick from the north of England. That's Dean Francis, and behind him, that's his dad, Trevor Francis, who exactly 20 years ago won the ABA welterweight title. Well, this is the light middleweight semi-final. Francis is all in black, and he faces here the Welsh Southpaw and a useful man, Joe Calzaghi. He's only 20 himself, comes from Monmouthshire, and Calzaghi was ABA champion at welterweight last year. Now he's upperweight. So Calzaghi of Wales, Italian uh, forebears, is the southpaw with the white trunks against the son of Trevor Francis, who not only was an ABA champion, but went on to a very successful professional career. In fact, fought for the British welterweight title and met men like Alan Minter. But now it's up to young Dean to try to emulate Dad. Round two. Zaggy switching his attack very neatly from head to body. Right. And I think uh, young Dean Francis has got a big problem on hand here. Nice combination punches from Kalzaghi who's beginning to get through. Francis, Six, taking the eight count. Seven, eight, but... well, uh, oh, what a good left hook that was. That is the best punch we've seen so far tonight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, box, so two, two counts, and although the referee said box, he called it off immediately afterwards. And Joe Calzaghi, last year's ABA welterweight uh, champion, will go through to the final. And uh, Dean Francis will have to come again sometime. Eric Noy, wearing that yellow singlet, comes from Manchester. He's had his problems in this contest against the Scottish champion, John Connolly. And Noy was down in the first few seconds of this contest and lost his head guard. He's had a very uncomfortable time, but he's boxing his way back into it now. Noy's a very experienced man. He's been around as a Northern star for some years. And in fact, he was last year's ABA runner-up at this weight. Whereas John Connolly, the 25-year-old Scottish champion, is pretty well unknown to me. He's come on the scene, really, for the first time this year. But he's a big, strong fellow. And nobody needs... Uh, Nobody needs telling, particularly Noy, who suffered from it. And Connolly, although he looks a bit crude, is getting through with some of these swings. 
and Noy does have a somewhat weak chin. He was beaten in last year's AVO final in 65 seconds by Mark Edwards. But Noy's the better boxer of the two. Your skill overcomes strength or the other way round. Final round. The Manchester man, the yellow singlet, he's on the floor again. Spread eagle. Is he going, he's not going to beat this. Well, he has beaten it, but the legs have gone, and he's gone down again, and the referee has completed the count, and Eric Noy is knocked out, and John Connolly celebrates victory, and he's the man who will go through to the finals. And for Noy, another year in which he won't be the champion. heavyweight division has produced a very interesting young man from Hove in Sussex wearing the blue strip is Scott Welsh who is a real crowd pleaser and he's up against the Scottish champion here Andy Caulfield from Dundee both having a little talking to from the referee here Caulfield of course represented Scotland at light heavyweight in the Commonwealth Games two years ago and that was Caulfield bending at the knees on the ropes and taking a standing count against this extraordinary young man, Scott Welsh, who takes me back 30 years. He reminds me of Billy Walker. Not too much style, but a lot of aggression. And he gives his opponents a lot of trouble. Caulfield is six feet three inches tall, but he's not managed really to keep Welsh away from him. Boy from home, the posh end of Brighton. In he goes again. He wouldn't give him too many marks for style, but he's effective. There's a clean up job on the face of the Scot in this final round. It's been a pretty hard contest particularly for Caulfield, who's been under pressure throughout. And I don't think he quite knows where he is. He's such a brawling battler, Welsh, that Caulfield doesn't quite know how to handle him. He's totally confused. What a mix-up. Caulfield looking as though he's saying to himself, what have I done to deserve this? Caulfield holding on for dear life. Gets a little ticking off of that. Punches come from all angles from Welsh. Well, he's been given the standing count, Caulfield. I don't think he's badly hurt. I think he is just totally confused by the brawling tactics of Scott Welsh. Well, Welsh has been uh, stopping men on the way to this semi-final. I'm not so sure that he'll stop Caulfield. I think Caulfield has enough experience to get him through here. But he's having a mighty uncomfortable time. <laughs> 24 years old, Scott Welsh. I think we're going to hear quite a bit more about this young man. Never stops throwing punches. The boy in blue, Scott Welsh from Hove. And there's the bell to end a very rough three minutes. And, uh, well, it goes to the judges. Welsh didn't have one of his quick wins. Has he impressed the judges? Ladies, 
Welsh it is, the Brighton brawler, through to the final, and he'll face the Welshman, Richard Fenton. and Verde Bremen. But uh, now it's amateur boxing and the sport's big night at the Royal Albert Hall, the ABA finals. The first bout we see is between Darren Fifield of the Home Counties and Lenny Woodcock of the Royal Navy. They're light flyweights, it's round two, and here's Harry Carpenter. The second round of this light flyweight championship, the lightest weight of all in the blue singlet is Lenny Woodcock from South End, able seaman in the Royal Navy, and in the white singlet from Henley on Thames, Darren Fifield. The first round fairly even. The pattern already set with Fifield in the white singlet doing most of the attacking, hustling forward. At the same time, the man from the Royal Navy. So it's quite an even contest so far. Well, the boy in blue, the blue singlet and blue trunks, Woodcock, has made a history in these championships which have uh, celebrate their 104th year this year he's the first man ever to get to an ABO final without ever having had to box he's had four successive walkovers and in fact he's only ever had two contests as a senior boxer and he's lost both of them but he's not giving a bad account of himself here against Fifield from Henley through to the head second round Fifield in the white singlet go, go. from Henley Ken Dry from England the referee go. former boxer and again Fifield scores with the one two combination over the top another good left hand and Woodcock's beginning to look a little worn. All the punches getting through and he's hurt to the body. Second round. This is Abel Seaman, Lenny Woodcock, the man who hadn't had a bout to get to this final. In serious trouble now. Again, Fifield going in, hooking away. So from being a fairly even contest, this has suddenly turned Fifield's way. Simply by superior force, quantity of punching, better quality punching. But it does begin to look now as though Woodcock will make it through to the last round. Coming. There's the bell. Well, the, uh, the trouble for the man from the Navy all started with a body punch. He was uh, taking a lot of punches, but the one that really winded him was that left underneath right into the solar plexus and doubled him over so for the last uh, round here they come in the white singlet is Darren Fifield from Henley 22 years old against his 20 year old opponent from the Royal Navy Abel Seaman Lenny Woodcock having his first bout tonight amazingly in these championships and having already taken account in the second round 
but Woodcock has come out full of determination and full marks to him. He comes from South End, served in the Gulf War, made a comeback this season, but looking likely here to have a rather hard final three minutes. And in fact, the referee's seen enough. And Ken Dry from the north of England takes Abel Seaman Woodcock back to the safety of his corner in the third and final round. So the man who didn't have a contest to get here has had to give best to Darren Fifield from Henley-on-Thames, 22 years old, former ABA junior champion and now the ABA light flyweight senior champion. In this bantamweight final, Mickey Aldis is wearing the white singlet. His opponent here from London, Patrick Mullings. Boxing in his second ABA final, Mullings. No, no holding. Okay. Getting a caution there for holding. Aldis was the one who was slipping over. So the bantamweight final, Aldis comes from Crawley. Crawley's best known boxer since Alan Winter. Stop! Stop! Stop. Okay, put it out. Watch your Aldis. We're just getting another caution there. So, lively little start to this eight and a half stone final, the bantamweights. The holding, once I've told you, Well, that's four cautions now between them in the first 30 seconds. Patrick Mullings with his back to us from the St. Patrick's Club. 21-year-old Southpaw leads with his right from Harrow Weald. Hard-hitting boy is Mullings. But... Aldis does actually have a win over him. They met on a club show in 1990, and Aldis in the white strip, the white singlet, outpointed him. Stop. Well, keep head up. Stop. Ken Dry working overtime here as the referee. was here two years ago in this same final but was stopped in two rounds then by Paul Lloyd from the north of England and Mullings going all out here with big right hands stop, stay break, stand back, both of you Box. And he's gone off at a furious pace. Aldis in his first ABA final. Although last year he did get to the semi-finals at Blackpool. But got out pointed there by the eventual champion, David Hardy from Scotland, who's now a professional. What a punch, and Aldis sprawls on the floor. That is a sample Six, of Mullins hitting. Seven, eight. Right to gloves, right to gloves. Been Oops. threatening to do that from the start. Stop, stop, stop. He's a wild man, okay. Mullins, but stop. he hurts. Come on, twice, hold him. Box. Three cautions now. He's had for holding. Aldis, but he hasn't had a public warning yet. Big following from Crawley in the Albert Hall tonight for all this. Well, that was uh, a pretty furious opening round between these two, Mullings and Aldis, with Mullings putting his man down. Set yourself up to that right hand, Gavin. Gavin. And we can have another look at that right now. He missed him with that one, but he didn't miss him with the next one. Second away, third and last round. 
Well, Patrick Mullings didn't uh, manage to put all this on the floor again in the second round, so here we go into the final round. Mullings attacking furiously again. And Aldis, who got, got himself back into this in the second round by better boxing. Showing signs here that he might just be able to repeat that win of uh, a couple of years ago. Aldis from Crawley. 24 later this month. Mullings from London, 21 years old, Southport, former ABA junior champion, former Great Britain schoolboy champion, and now threatening to become the ABA senior bantamweight champion. time to get into this he didn't have a contest in the semi-finals he got a walkover because his Scottish opponent withdrew so he hasn't had a contest in several weeks and that's no help whereas Mullings put his man away in the ABA semi-finals in Gateshead in under three minutes that's a good left for Mullings again those hard punches come at you from either wing Stand up. <laughs> Big contingent from Crawley here, Crawley and Sussex where Alan Minter came from. Big following for Aldis, and they're making plenty of noise now in this final round, hoping against hope that he's managed to overcome the disastrous first round and done enough to win. I'm not so sure. It's a lot closer now than it looked in the opening round. closing moments Hold is not landing with those leads good finish by Mullings and you have to feel that Mullings will have impressed the judges enough to take the title Like World Away final, the 10 stone division between Adrian Stone from Bristol, who's wearing the dark strip, the all dark strip, and Darren McCarrick from the North of England from the Borshaw Club wearing the red trunks. These two met in the England semi finals two years ago, and Stone outpointed McCarrick. So here's McCarrick's chance for revenge. McCarrick wearing the red trunks. And for Stone, a second chance to win an ABA title. He was in these finals two years ago. He lost on points to Jim Pender of Scotland. But a much better prospect now than then. And Stone, as we well know, is a very hard hitter. A sensational start for McCarrick. If anybody looked likely to be on the floor, it was McCarrick. But no, still the first round. 
And McCarrick now going for victory in the first round. McCarrick in the red trunks. And Stone has been very deeply shocked and he's hurt again. And he's over for the second time. been stopped and McCarrick has got his revenge how pointed by Stone two years ago in these championships and now has had his revenge in full and that is the most astonishing win of the evening so far totally unexpected completely overwhelmed Adrian Stone and Stone was still a very shaken man when it was called off here's the first knockdown McCarrick in the red trunks, tremendous left hook. Face first, Stone went, and that paved the way to a very quick victory. Let's have a look at the second disaster for Stone. Hurt badly again to the head, two good punches. The referee steps in, but not before Stone hits the floor once again. And when he got up, the referee quite rightly stopped it. And Darren McCarrick from the Borshaw Club, Greater Manchester, is the 1992 ABA Light Welterweight Champion. What a win. Well, Let's get back to those uh, ABA boxing finals at the Royal Albert Hall. We move up weights now. Uh, this time it's the welterweight final between Mark Santini of Birmingham and Barry Thorogood of Wales. We're into round two with Harry Carpenter. Second to I, second round. Second round of this welterweight final, all in white, is Mark Santini, the oldest man in these finals. He's 29, and he's 10 years older than his opponent in the red singlet, Barry Thorogood, the young Welsh champion. Santini edged the first. He's got superior reach here. He certainly hits harder than Thorogood. And Thorogood already has got a slightly injured mouth. Santini now beginning to open up with the big stuff. And Thorogood is going through a rather hard time already in this second round. Only 19, Thorogood. Had a good win in the semi-finals at Gateshead. He appointed an experienced man, Paul Burns, from the north of England. But Santini has been around a long time. It's taken him 10 years to get to the top. Experience is looking likely to tell here. Stop, stop. Stand up, stand up. Ken Dryer, Box. English referee. Stop. That's a good combination, left and a right. Two, and, uh, three, four, he was almost out on his feet. Five, the referee is absolutely right six, to give the count. He was badly hurt, and he's still blinking from the effects of those two punches. I think this is all over. It is second round, and Mark Santini at 29, been trying to win an ABA title for 10 years, and now at 29, he makes it. And he makes it in the way he's won most of his uh, bouts on the way to these finals. He stopped his man, stopped his man in the second oh, round. 29-year-old Santini, the welterweight champion of Britain. Second to buy, third and last round. Good action. So we come to the final three minutes of this light middleweight final. In the red singlet is Joe Calzaghi of Wales from the Newbridge Club in Monmouthshire who was last year's champion at welterweight, one weight down from this. And his opponent here, brave boy from the Empire Club in Bristol, Glenn Catley. They're both 20 years old, and Catley, who's been going through it for two rounds, has suddenly come out fighting for the final three minutes. He's had enough of being outboxed, and he's going to have a go. Good luck to him. Great. 
Calzaghe might live to regret not having got rid of him. Holding some. And suddenly Calzaghe, last year's champion at Welter, incurs the displeasure of the referee. That's a slip. Wipe it off, wipe it off. So Carl Zaghi in the red singlet, who looked as though he was on his way to victory in the second round quite easily, suddenly has a fight on his hands. And this is all through the extreme courage and determination of the man in the white singlet. Glenn Catley, whose nose is bleeding, who's had one public warning Stop. for holding. Stop. Have a look, the referee's going to wipe his nose now for him. Referees these days have to be uh, almost doctors. Stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Mr. Dry will now get rid of the dirty swab in a little receptacle provided. Good left hook from Calzaghi. It's a hard contest, this. And Calzaghi now being made to work hard for every point. Stop! Come on, son. Keep it up, keep it up. Twice now we head. Keep it up, OK? Box. Well, Karzaghi, again, well on top, but you've really got to hand it to Catley. This is a, a wonderful stand by him, very courageous. He's the second boxer from the Empire Club Bristol to box tonight in these finals. The other one, Adrian Stone, unfortunately, didn't get through the first round. And it's been stopped. Not too far from the end. That's very sad for Catley. He'd done so well, but referee Ken Dry decides that he's taken enough. And so it's all called off in the third and final round. And Joe Calzaghi from the Newbridge Club in Mamlesha has won another ABA championship. Welterweight champion last year, like middleweight champion this year. Tim Taylor's old title, and Tim's here tonight to see this final. Calzaghi the winner but a very good loser, a very courageous one. Second away, third and last round. Well, this has been one of the liveliest finals of the night. The light heavyweight final between Paul Rogers in the yellow singlet from Swindon and Kelly Oliver in the red singlet from Bracebridge Club in Lincoln. And in the second round, Rogers, the man in the yellow singlet, forced two standing counts over Oliver, who's only 18, has a fine junior record, but uh, had the tables turned on him. He had quite a good first round, Oliver, but a bad second. And still, Rogers is coming forward, pushing it hard. From the Penhill Royal British Legion Hello. Club, a Swindon construction Break. worker. And the man from Lincoln in the red singlet, his nose is bleeding, he's under heavy pressure. Only 18, good junior record. And both these men stopped their previous two opponents in these championships. Will this one go all the way? It may not. Two more good punches from Rogers. He really lets them go. And Oliver finding his man trapped in the corner comes back at him. And now we've got a standing count the other way. Some contest. Kelly Oliver's supporters have come to the ringside. They're standing there, waving their fists. This really is raising the roof. Oliver comes storming back. Tremendous contest. Stop! Stop! Do that corner, please. And time to wipe the nose 
of Oliver. Crowd don't like this sort of thing, but uh, it's the referee's job to do this. Just to check for himself the amount of damage. On they go. Third and final round, light heavyweight final. 12 stone 10 division. Well, you won't see fiercer action than this in any final. Two very fit men because they've been going at it like this since the first bell. It's going to be a toss-up who wins. Closing seconds of a fast and furious and wildly exciting contest. All over. What a contest. And the Albert Hall crowd, and it's a big crowd, rise to cheer these two determined men well i haven't the foggiest idea who's won it's very close obviously you can't give a draw in amateur boxing which way will the judges go ladies and gentlemen the winner and the uh, light heavyweight champion in the aba national championships for 1992 by a unanimous decision oliver yeah. Yeah. kelly oliver all three judges have voted for him the 18-year-old Kelly Oliver from the Bracebridge Club in Lincoln, twice an ABA junior champion, and now a very fine ABA senior champion. Third and last round. We come to the final three minutes of this heavyweight final between Richard Fenton, the Southpaw from Wales in the dark strip, and Scott Welsh from the Hove Club in Sussex, the boy in blue and the white head guard. Well, for two rounds now, Fenton has been outboxing Welsh with neat southpaw counterpunching. And Welsh, who showed himself to be a brawling sort of battler in the semi-finals, has really not got to grips with this and he hasn't put in enough punches. Maybe he'll come alive in the final three minutes, but he's not the man he was in Gateshead last month. And now... Welsh has got a nosebleed to add to his other problems. Stay there. Stay there. Stop. They have to wait while the referee gets rid of the swamp. Cuts. Looks to me as though Welsh may even have a bit of a cut higher up on the head. Difficult to tell. Might be just blood smeared from the nose. Worked its way up. Good right hand from Fenton. He's only 19, this Welsh uh, heavyweight champion. He's about to join the police cadets. And Welsh, at last, getting some big punches through. And there's a standing count now over Fenton, surely. Can Welsh pull this round? He did this in the third round in Gateshead. He made his Scottish rival there take two counts in the final round. So Scott Welsh from Shoreham in Sussex, boxes for the Hove Club, finally getting some punches through at long last, but again, his nose needs attention. Now Fenton gets a respite. But. Well, Welsh has certainly lost the first two rounds. He needs to put everything into this if he's going to win. That's what he's Watch doing. Your head, boy. There'll be another stoppage in a minute for more nose attention, I suspect. He's bleeding very heavily, Welsh. 
and beginning to take some Watch punishment ahead. back again. Very tired, Welsh. He's been picked off with more accurate counter-punching. But he's still there, and he's still letting the big ones come. Another nose wipe. Closing round, oh, and Welsh goes right straight in with a huge right hand. Now, I don't know whether he's punched down or whether he's slipped down or whether he's just tired. Difficult to tell. I don't think he was punched down. What a final round Welsh has had, and that's going to be it. It's all over. The referee hasn't even bothered to finish the count. Scott Welsh, the man I likened to a new Billy Walker in the semi-finals. He's done it again here. He's produced an all-out battery of punches in the third and final run when it looked as though he was going to be beaten. So Scott Welsh does what Billy Walker did in 1961. He wins the ABA Heavyweight Championship. DOE. Champion of the ABA National Championships by a knockout. Welsh in the red corner. So 24 year old Scott Welsh has produced a sensational knockout in the final round and uh, now one is relieved to see 19 year old Richard Fenton from Wales getting out of the ring under his own steam.